Hello, I thought I would just do a kind of chill chatty video today. I'm just gonna do a little bit of painting and chat. That's pretty much the concept. Um, yeah, I just felt like I really wanted to have a chat. I feel like it's been a little while since I've actually talked about my life, what's going on, all of that stuff, and just had like, yeah, a general chat with you. And I thought I don't like just sitting there and chatting. I feel very awkward when I'm just sat there doing nothing, I use my hands a lot. Um, so I thought I'll just paint and chat. I'm not gonna paint anything special. It'll probably be more of this kind of thing. I don't know why I'm holding it up like a proud five-year-old who's just learned to paint. That's pretty much the skill level we're talking about. Um, but yeah, I just thought it would give me something to do. We can have a little chat. It's going to be a great time. So I think the first thing that I haven't actually talked about is the fact that I've moved. I mean, it's been obvious because I'm in a different location to where I was in my previous videos, like pre may time um i'm still in london i've just moved in london to a bigger house i found the house on spare room moved in with people i found on spare room and it's all been really great actually like the only reason i left my old place was that the girls that i was living with and one of their boyfriends they were going to move to south london and my life is all north of the river really except my family because they are all south not like south london but south of the river um so i guess technically i'd be close to them if i was in south london but the like where i'm based now is really well connected and to get to my family it takes me literally like 40 minutes on a train or like tube then train and I don't really think that's that bad and I don't think it'd be that much better if I was in South London so staying north of the river has just been what I wanted to do but obviously that meant having to like split up from my old house because they were going to South London and I didn't want to go there so yeah I've been in this place since the end of May really enjoying my time here I feel like also I'm just enjoying the space a bit more. I had quite a small room back in my old place and I feel like I did decorate it nicely and to my tastes but there was nothing you could really do about the limited space like you couldn't make the room any bigger, the bed was already pushed to the side, like I had probably this much floor space in my entire room but now I have like my bed in the middle of the room I've got space at the end to walk I've got my desk I've got like just so much more space and I just feel so much happier with that space and it's meant that I can get more plants it's meant that I could get this lovely egg chair um I've also brought up my lamp that I had back at my parents house um so overall I just feel like I've been able to really grow into this room better and actually decorate it better and just create a space where I am happier and also what I realised I've kind of talked on my channel where I had quite a bad spell of depression and when I was in that spell of depression I was in my old room a lot I didn't really leave that room a lot like I'd only leave that room to go to my boyfriend's or see some friends but during that time I didn't see a lot of people and I did mainly stay at home or at my boyfriend's um so I kind of I think in my head I'd kind of given that room quite like a negative vibe because I associated it a lot with when I was feeling down and even though like it didn't get me down a lot of the time if I wasn't getting out and seeing friends sometimes if I was just in that room for a prolonged period, I would start to feel like those feelings again. And um, like not as severely as when I was depressed, but definitely like some of the same feelings. And I think I just needed a kind of fresh space and a fresh start really. And that's what this room has given me. And I feel like I, I still do struggle with my mental health every now and then. I think everyone does in some capacity. But if I've ever had a bit of a down day here, I'm just able to snap out of it a lot better. Or I just, I don't know, I don't have all of those really negative feelings about the room already. So if I do start to feel down, I'm not kind of like feeding into it from my surroundings. If any of that makes sense, I might have just waffled on for a little bit. Not making sense, but hopefully some sort of sense came out of that. I'm trying to think if there's any other big changes that I haven't addressed. 
But honestly, I just can't remember. I just kind of really abruptly stopped filming again. Like I said, I was coming back and then I filmed three videos or something and then I disappeared again. And it was mainly a kind of time thing. And also I talked about at the end of my last video that I posted that I've now got studio lights. And I think what was putting me off of filming a lot before was I was producing content and yeah, I was liking the outfits. But I wasn't liking how the videos were turning out, like they were really dull, I didn't have very good lighting in that room anyway, like I was downstairs and at the back of the house and it just wasn't very well naturally lit so also not having studio lighting meant it was just a very dark atmosphere to um, film in and I wasn't enjoying the kind of like physical look of the video and I know that's not everything but it definitely does contribute to the video I like to be proud of what I'm putting out and I just wasn't proud of the visuals of the videos so that kind of also stopped me from posting but now that I do have studio lights I can film at any time of day I can just be proud of the visual quality of the videos like I think it has opened up many more doors for me in terms of filming here because when I used to film at home when I lived with my parents I would always use my studio lights and I'm like looking back on some of those videos I'm proud of like the visual quality of them but actually like the content I look back at some outfits and I'm like that's questionable I don't know what point I'm trying to make but I just want to be proud of the content I'm putting out there and I'm sure at the time when I put those outfits together I was proud of them but my style's changed a bit and I look back at them and I'm just like really that that okay but yeah, I'm kind of like in two frames of mind whether to like delete them. Like I'd kind of like my channel to just be things I'm proud of. But at the same time, I would like to be able to see the progress and have that shown on there. So maybe I should just keep them. I'm not really sure. And I think I'll give it some more thought. I mean, if I were to delete them, I would just private them so that they're not gone forever. But yeah i just want my channel to be something that i'm proud of and like i am proud of my channel but i think i could be a lot prouder if i just put out the content that i really love filming and make it visually nice as well um and then i'll decide what i'll do with the old videos whether i want to keep them as a kind of like ah uh, look at where i came from or if i just bin them slash private them I really don't know what I'll do about it. Like I know I don't have to decide now, but I really am in two frames of mind about it. Like I will just handle it when I've got enough content that I'm proud of. Like I don't want to strip my channel back. So I want there to be videos on there, but I do want to be proud of the videos and I'm not even like 80% proud of some of those videos. I think they could be so much better, but it is nice to see where you came from. But at the same time, all of my videos are kind of like representing me and I don't like them maybe they shouldn't be there I'll make my mind up at another time but that's a debate that I'm having at the moment I'm also trying to decide what to do with my hair at the moment like if you've watched me or just like look back at my channel you'll know that I mean my natural color is a kind of mid brown light brown kind of color and then for a while I had kind of like highlighted end bits and then I went fully bleach blonde and then I was bleach blonde for probably like a year and a half in the end I knew that I wasn't planning on staying bleach blonde because it is just a lot of maintenance but my my original plan before I just got very impulsive um was to kind of get my roots smudged out and have a kind of like balayage highlight kind of look um, but also I was really interested to know what I'd look like ginger or like orange kind of hair so I bought the Bleach London what's it called tangerine dream I think um temporary hair color and I'll try and insert a picture of how it went and like in hindsight I should have left it I should have left it it looked fine but there was just I'm very picky and there was just a slight undertone that I was like you know what I could get rid of that and it could look really great did I get rid of it no did it go shit of course it did um so yeah I did my hair that color 
And then I did it again over the top to try and get rid of the undertone, but it actually just made it way too vibrant. I don't have any pictures of that. So then I furiously washed my hair about, I don't want to exaggerate, but it was a lot. It was probably about 12 times that day. My hair felt like straw afterwards. It was kind of a peachy straw mess because the colour wouldn't come out, like the orange just faded to this kind of peach colour, which was the like under overtone. I don't know if it was an undertone or an overtone. The tone that I was trying to get rid of because I didn't want peachy hair, I just wanted orange hair. Um, so it faded to this horrible peachy colour. Obviously my hair had like no moisture in it because I'd washed it 12, 20, not 20 times, but like a lot of times. Um, and because it was obviously that colour, I didn't want to keep it like that. I was like, I can't go in public like this. So I decided to put a brown... It was semi-permanent to be fair, so like, give me some credit. Um, a brown semi-permanent dye over the top, which it took, my hair was brown, great, but my hair was brown straw, like it was horrible to touch. I remember I literally, I went to my boyfriend's house the next day and he was like touching my hair, I was like just don't. I, I think I laughed every time he touched my hair because I was like I know it just feels horrible. And like obviously he knew the story, he knew that's not what my hair normally felt like. It was just at that stage where it was embarrassing, like my hair has always been so soft and fairly nice most of the time, but it was just like this brown crispy mess. Um, yeah, I did cry about it quite a bit because I just, I remember I went from having blonde hair that I really liked and that I'd actually just done the roots of to uh, brown straw hair. Um, which I, I've always planned on going back to my natural colour at some point, but I wasn't ready to and I was just thinking about all the money I'd wasted and like how my hair just felt horrible and it wasn't the best time for me. But what saved my hair was Olaplex. Olaplex number three saved my hair. Like it was just this horrible straw and then after just one use even, it felt like dry hair. And then after more uses, my hair became hair again. Um, and then you'd think that I'd learn my lesson from all of that. Oh, ho oh, oh. ho, no. So I still had a little bit of the tangerine dream left and I thought, I've got brown hair now. Like it should just give it a little tint. I actually, to be fair, I think I did this wisely, but obviously not wisely thinking back on it, but I was like, I just want a little orange tint. So I mixed not even all of the rest of the little bottle, like there was probably like this much left in it. I mixed like half of that little amount that was left with quite a lot of their, what's their Bleach London's mask called? The reincarnation mask? I mixed those together. I left it on my hair for like, two minutes like really not a lot like I think on the bottle for that tangerine dream you're supposed to leave it on your hair for like 20 minutes or maybe more I can't remember um but I was like you know what I just want a little tint like surely this this can't go wrong it's a temporary color I'm mixing it with conditioner this can't go wrong I left it on my hair for two minutes horrible peachy tone was back um and I remember thinking like when I did it I was like you know what it's not that bad I'll live with it it's not what I wanted but I'll live with it and then I lived with it for like a couple of days and I was like I don't want to live with this anymore I don't like it dyed my hair with more brown semi-permanent hair dye um and then I had that for a while it faded to a really nice color I was kind of just like living with it working it and then probably like, I want to say like a month ago, maybe longer actually, I decided to dye my hair with a permanent colour, ginger, don't know what I'm counting, um, and that's kind of faded as well, I'm now not sure whether it was permanent, because I know permanent colours can still fade, but it's faded a lot, but I don't know if that's just because my hair's been through a lot, and 
it can't take it much more. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I did a kind of like, it was like a proper ginger colour and I did really like it, but I think I, I do miss my blonde hair. I think that is what has suited me the most, either that or like my natural colour. So I do want to get it bleached again, but not like bleached all over, just like highlighted or balayaged, but... I don't know if my hair can take it, but I'm not going to attempt to do my hair again. I am going to go to a proper salon or just like ask them about it and be like, look, my hair's been through a fair whack this year. Could I possibly have some highlights or just something to brighten up my hair a bit? I mean, I do really like my hair right now, but I just think I could look better. There are some days where I look at my hair and I just think, fit. Um, but there are some days where I'm like, I just want my blonde hair back. So I think I'm gonna go to a salon and just ask them about it. They might say, your hair's been through way too much to do that. And I'm very much expecting them to say that, um, but might as well see because I do miss the blonde. I mean, feel free to let me know what color hair you think I look best with. But I think personally, I think I just look better with lighter hair. And I think it just, it makes my eyebrows stand out a bit more. It makes, I think just my features in general stand out a bit more and I feel boring with my natural colour. So I, I think I'm a bit reluctant to go back to my natural colour because I know it suits me, but I do feel slightly boring. So I don't know, let me know what you're thinking, but I think I want to go some sort of blonde again, if my hair can take it. I'm willing to get my hair cut to help the health of it. Um, but I am also quite liking the long hair life. I haven't had my hair this long in a good amount of time, but I do also miss the short hair. I am so indecisive, like it's actually a joke, but hmm, makes life interesting. I am getting pins and needles, and I'm also trying to remember what else I wanted to talk about. I mean, I don't really think there was much to talk about. I'll probably finish this video and be like, ah, that whole big thing. I mean, I did want to talk about what kind of videos I'll be making because I really want to make a lot more fashion content. Obviously, that's something that I'm really passionate about and have no problems doing. But I also want to mix in like other content as well. I'm just not really sure what that other content should be because, I mean, I can talk for England. I think this video will probably prove that, but a lot of my other videos also proved that. I remember I'd get some comments like, wow, you can talk. And I'm like, yeah, I know, like, it's a problem. Oh no, it's not a problem. It's just a thing. But yeah, I love making fashion content. Obviously, it's just I want to break it up every now and then with other content. And I'm happy to talk about things. It's just I don't know what people are interested in hearing about. Um, and also, I'm aware if I'm always doing fashion content, I don't have an unlimited wardrobe and I don't want to buy loads of clothes either because that's not great for the environment. Um, so yeah, I just, my camera cut me off. I think that goes to show how much I do talk, but I think I was just saying about wanting to produce more content than just fashion content to both like break up the fashion content and also to not run out of fashion content because I don't have an unlimited wardrobe. Um, so I'd really be interested in what you guys want to see. I mean, I do need to scroll through and look back at old comments because I know that I have asked this before and I don't want you just to be shouting ideas at me and I'm not listening. And um, so I am going to go back through old videos and old comments. Um, but if you have any fresh ideas for me or any like ideas that you have already said and you want to comment them again, please do because I would really like to know. And I am happy to talk about things, do things, show things um, that aren't just fashion. I really don't like what I'm painting. These colours, horrible. Mm. Oh well. I tried. In other news, my phone just decided to randomly die on me the other day, which was great fun. Really loved having to go and rush to the Apple store. Well, firstly, to try and get them to fix my phone and then got told that it's a hardware issue and because your phone is just over two years old, it's pretty much dead to us. Um, so I had to fork out a lovely bit of money for a new phone that I didn't even want, but 
you don't realise how dependent you are on your phone until you're without it. Like, I like to consider myself someone that isn't on my phone that much, but I went two days without a phone. Like, I went to the Apple store to try and get my phone fixed, got told that it couldn't be fixed, went out for pints, because what else are you going to do when you've got a broken phone? Um, and then the next day... Actually, it might have just been one day, because then the next day... I was halfway through the work day and just really struggling with like trying to just do my work and also with our work stuff you have like a code that goes to your phone and I had to set that up to my housemate's phone but then she's obviously like not gonna be there all the time for me to get like codes from so I was just like you know what I'm gonna go buy a new phone because this is ridiculous um so yeah I now have a new phone that's another exciting piece to my life. The thing is with my old phone was that it was a XS or 10S or whatever. Um, and I kept it in really good condition. It wasn't cracked. It wasn't water damaged. It just decided to glitch when it was charging and then decided not to work anymore. And the Apple man couldn't fix it. And I was like, well, this is great. Like I know so many people who chuck their phones about and they're fine or they can get it fixed. Um, but me, no, I've just decided to glitch on me one day and breaks. Love that. I guess looking at the plus side is that I've now got a nice new phone. So that's lovely. It's got a lovely camera. Um, I finally got the wide camera option. So I guess that's also good. But I'm just not someone who's very excited about phones. Like I usually use my phones until they completely die on me. Like before I got my XS, I had my iPhone 5 for ages. Probably like at least five years I want to say um and then I think like all the buttons started breaking and I was like yeah probably time to get a new one um, and I was fully intending on having my XS for just as long but obviously it had different plans but that's okay I am trying to be better at just letting things go so like when my phone first broke I was a bit like oh this is so unfair about it because obviously like I treated it really well I was hoping that it would last me a bit longer but I'm just trying to not be so bothered about things because in the end like it's just going to eat me up it's not actually going to do me any good to be bothered about it like obviously everyone has emotions and reactions and that's fine but I'm just trying not to let things chew me up for so long because I think in the past that would really really chew me up and I'd probably still now be thinking like oh hate that I had to get a new phone like spend that money on it but now I'm just trying to be like I make money I can make more where that came from I'm very privileged to be able to do that I'm very lucky that I've got a buffer of money that I've saved that I could dip into for that like I'm trying to just look on the bright side of things a little bit more um, I'm trying to do that in my life as well sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but I think that's also like part of life just realizing that you can try and do something, it doesn't always work out. But tomorrow's a new day, you try again. So like, I'm trying to be unbothered a lot more. Some days I'm very bothered by things, but every day is a new day and, you know, plenty of time to practice being unbothered. Life advice of Katie, you probably don't want to take it, but I'm always here if you need it. I think I'm gonna leave this video there just because I've got to the point where I could ramble on forever and I'll spare your ears. So if you could just let me know what you wanna see from me, if you wanna see more of this kind of thing because I like painting and I like talking, so it's a great combo. Um, or yeah, just let me know anything that you wanna see from me. I think I know what I wanna do in terms of fashion content, but also if you've got more ideas for that, let me know but it is more like the between fashion content content that I need help with if that makes sense like the content between the fashion content is where I need your help so yeah let me know what you want to see and I will see you soon